Hello everyone, and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Tempe Marketplace in Tempe, Arizona. A large portion of Tempe Marketplace is a giant parking lot surrounded by big box stores like this JCPenney and Best Buy, but there is also a mall component to it as well. And the mall portion of Tempe Marketplace is what I want to take a look at for this episode. Let's take a look at the map, and I love that question mark icon at the top. But when you take a look at the map, you can see that down at the bottom, there is a small outdoor mall portion to Tempe Marketplace. The big box stores across the top aren't that interesting, but the mall part of it, which is called the District, is actually really interesting to walk through. Here's one of the entrances for the District, and something you'll notice about this place is there's a lot of tall stuff here. There's a lot of tall palm trees and tall signs. And you're also greeted with a sign asking you to not bake your children and pets in the car. I've never seen anything like that at a mall before, and it's kind of sad that that sign is necessary. Tempe Marketplace opened in September of 2007, and it was developed and is owned by Vestar Development Company. It was built on 130 acres of land that was at one time a landfill and an industrial area that was so toxic it was put on the U.S. EPA Superfund cleanup list in 1983. A shopping mall is probably a better use of this land than a super toxic dump. Another reason that I wanted to cover this place is it's one of the few malls in the Phoenix area that actually still has water features and fountains, and there are quite a few here. Normally I don't care for outdoor malls, especially in the Phoenix area, but this one's a little bit different. It is more mall-like than somewhere like Santan Village in Gilbert. It almost feels more like a outdoor mall in Southern California here, which I really enjoy the outdoor malls in Southern California. This footage was filmed on a Sunday afternoon a few hours before closing time, and even right up until the mall was officially closing at 6 p.m., it was still pretty lively here. I love visiting dead malls, but sometimes it's nice to visit a mall that's not dead just to remind yourself that not every mall is dying. There are some that are still doing pretty well. I also think it's interesting to see what malls like this are doing differently to keep themselves from becoming dying malls. We will definitely be taking a closer look at all of the water features at this mall as we walk throughout it. Besides lots of water features, something else they do differently at this mall is this sip and stroll thing here. You're allowed to go to participating bars and restaurants and grab a beer or something and stroll through the mall with it. There are various signs throughout, like this one, telling you where you can and can't go with an alcoholic beverage. And I think Tempe Marketplace is one of only two malls in the Phoenix area where this is allowed, the other one being Desert Ridge Marketplace. It was a beautiful day when I filmed this, so going for a sip and stroll sounded like a good idea. So I popped over into this Kabuki Japanese restaurant, and along with your drink you get this nifty purple glitter bracelet. And then I went off for a stroll with my ice-cold Sapporo. Between the gorgeous weather and all of the green plants around and the way this mall is laid out, it almost felt like I was walking through an outdoor mall in San Diego. Hopefully you like palm trees because you are going to see a lot of them in this video. There weren't very many empty storefronts here and the few that were empty had signs up saying stuff was coming soon. So they're doing a pretty good job of keeping this place occupied, and it's also all major names, like this Tony and Guy salon here, there was the Forever 21, and again, there are very, very tall palm trees. I think this place is a lot more visually interesting than the other outdoor malls in the Phoenix area, and you get to see things like birds here getting a little snack. I bet this place looks really great in the spring when all of these plants are flowering. Another thing they do differently here is live musical performances. There's a stage there, and they've had several concerts here, including Power Man 5000 and Buck Cherry. Now that I know about the stage, I'm going to start keeping an eye on who's playing at Tempe Marketplace. Walking through here definitely gives you the impression that they're encouraging you to come here and hang out. Obviously, they want you to go in the stores and spend money, but... This place just feels a lot more inviting than some of the other even indoor malls in the Phoenix area. There's also a good amount of stuff here and there to kind of catch your eye, like this disco horse at this very pink store. And it looks like there's some text on the wall in the back there, and it says, In a world full of bitches, be a bad one. Always good advice. 
after checking out the disco horse, I had to stop and appreciate all of the mall greenery again. Mall plants are awesome, and this place has the ultimate mall plants. Here's one of the few empty storefronts, and they've turned it into a little photo op area with a postcard feel. That's kind of neat. A lot of the artwork here seems to be sun faded now, but I actually kind of like that aesthetic. Now this mall does already have a Hot Topic store, but it's getting ready to move into this new spot right next door to this Box Lunch store, which makes sense because Hot Topic owns Box Lunch. I wonder if they're going to be connected inside as well. Even though this place is a little on the small side, it does have most of your classic mall stores. For example, you've got a Pacific Sun War there. And there's a Spencer's here as well, right next door to the old Hot Topic location. I think it's pretty great that they were able to take a small-scale ecological disaster and turn it into something like this. It's always nice to see lots of people out enjoying a beautiful day instead of being cooped up inside their houses or cooped up inside their car driving from big box store to big box store. All of these giant pictures really add to the early 2000s aesthetic of this place. Down by this Harkins Theater, under the giant guitar dude, is another water feature. It's too bad they don't have the fire part of it there turned on, but let's take a closer look at this fountain. It's really nice to be able to have Fountain Cam make a return. There hasn't been any water features for me to check out in a while. Now this alley down here kind of serves as the mall's food court. And right above it is another one of those giant pictures. And this one really reminds me of the Movie Channel logo. Here's a closer look at some of the food options in this little food court area. There's a pizza place, there's a Greek place, there's a salad place down on the end. There's five or six places in total, and it's fairly small, but again, this mall is small, and there are also restaurants kind of dotted throughout as well. At this point, it was getting close to the mall's official closing time of 6 p.m., so the traffic was starting to thin out a little bit. There are some restaurants and bars here that are open later, though. I do want to come here on a Friday or Saturday evening when it's open a little bit later so I can see what it looks like in the dark. I did notice a lot of kind of faux neon signs and string lights around, so I bet it's pretty when it's all lit up. This is for all the people that leave their empty cups around. That's all you have to do. It's super simple. Quit leaving your garbage around. After I finished my drink, I kind of realized that I really hadn't checked out what any of the stores in this place looked like. I just kind of walked around the mall and enjoyed all of the sights and the beautiful weather. So let's check out this It's Sugar store, which is a candy store. And it looks fairly busy. Besides candy, they have things like candles and Funko Pops. It seems like everybody sells Funko Pops now. But it is always fun to visit the candy store. They also have I Love to Fart mugs. I almost bought one of those because who doesn't love to fart? And there's a retro candy section. They've got a lot of the classics here like bubble tape, but they also have candy and gum cigarettes, which I'm surprised they still sell these. They have removed the word cigarettes off these a long time ago, but it's still obvious what they're supposed to be. Where do sugar babies come from? Ask your sugar daddy.
After checking out the candy store, I realized it was the mall's closing time and I had completely lost track of time and I think that's actually a plus for this mall. That's what malls should do is make you forget how long you've been spending in there. But before we head out, let's check out one last fountain. Overall, I really like Tempe Marketplace. I think it's the best outdoor mall in the Phoenix area. It feels like the early to mid 2000s in here in a good way, and it doesn't feel like they're trying to get you in and out as quick as possible. We should probably head out of here now though, since it is closing time. But what are your thoughts on Tempe Marketplace? Is this a mall that you'd like to visit or is it one that you go to frequently? I'd love to know down in the comments below. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on Tempe Marketplace. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel. And yes, it's still a Twitter logo down there. Everyone still calls it Twitter. X is stupid and Elon can suck it.